I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. This is Colin McGuigan for AFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm joined today by Jamie Conlon in Frankfurt. Jamie, how's things? Oh, good, Colin. You're laughing there like you want to slag me, but we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, obviously, we're, we're in Frankfurt for a massive fight weekend for Conlon Boxing and for Potty McCrory. How excited are you for this opportunity for Potty? Uh, listen, everyone's quietly confident. It's a very relaxed fight week. Uh, the mood in the camp is very relaxed, but there is a there is an air of confidence. Uh, excited, um, but confident is what's running the team. It's a it, listen. It's a big ask. It's a tough ask coming away from home, coming to Germany for the first time. Potty's first time fighting away from home as a pro against an unbeaten German. Up against it, like, but excited. Happy for him that he's that he's getting the revel in this opportunity to get in this opportunity. Uh, yeah, it's 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 been great and and hopefully everything that he's been dreaming of and we're all been hoping for is fulfilled on on Saturday night. I do have to say, you know, coming away to Germany, notoriously, you're told that you need a knockout when you come to this country. Is that in the thinking for Potty, or because Potty has so much power, does it not really matter in your opinion? You're mixing Germany up with England, it's England is just as bad. Uh, not, not just as bad, it's worse. But German, yeah, Germany in the 90s was always renowned for that. Um, various different people came across, and you know, Matthew Macklin was probably the most significant one that you remember. And you know, from our own perspective, I always remember I thought McGee, Ian McGee beat Octay Urkel out here, but when I probably watch it back, maybe he did, didn't. So, um, yeah, it's not it's not that. McCrory has come in, he's ticked all the boxes that he needed to do in camp. I think he's not coming in with that mentality of just su- searching for a knockout, but he he's so heavy handed. If a knockout presents himself it'll always be already be taken. He fights in a way that he is looking for a knockout. It looks like he's looking for a knockout, but that's not the way he prepares. He prepares for a fight that could go twelve rounds and it's the first time that he's um you know, been asked to do twelve rounds, so he's prepared like that. So it's uh, yeah, it's a great feeling. It's great to see him preparing this way and, and having this mentality, and it kind of fills everyone in the, in the team full of confidence because they see how he's prepared. Not looking beyond this weekend in any way, shape, or form, but for Potty going forward, this fight does this bring him on to a whole new level of, of fights in the future? This is the fight's all that matters. Can't really look look past it. Um, there's loads of different things we need to speak about after the fight regarding the weight, super middleweight, like heavyweight, if he wins, if he loses, all these different things. But the main priority and the only thing that they should be thinking about is, is beating Leon Boone on Saturday night. You yourself have announced a massive card in Belfast this week, and we'll touch on that in a second. But two guys who will be on that card are also on this card in Kurt Walker and Kieran Malloy. Is this a good opportunity for them away in Germany on a world title undercard of a, a, a Conlon boxing colleague as such yeah it's it's the reason for making the go here or making them on this card putting them on this card and um top rank are kind of letting them you know spread their wings go over the the first year especially far and way to see all these different cities different comfort out of their comfort zones different uh traditions in different cities in terms of commissions and, and how fate weeks are run so it's new it's not new to them as fighters because both of them are elite are elite level amateurs as as they were elite level amateurs and they've been around the world and competed in, in numerous competitions, especially in Germany. Um, so that's not new, but the new element of it is professional um, medicals, weigh-ins, fate weeks, build-ups, different wee things that that you don't expect at home. You have your own comforts there, so it's all uh, you know not sleeping in your own bed, so on and so forth. It's all um, learning, and, and that's why they're both a match, when, with good matches at different stages of the careers to kind of test them in different ways. Kurt has got a, a tall, rangy, more negative boxer than he had last time. He had a small squad come forward, Argentinian. This time it's an Italian who can be awkward. And, and this time, 
Kieran's opponent is a lot more closed shop, doesn't let him look for the or doesn't let him have a, an easy shot on 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 defense. Keeps very tight and comes back with counters, looking to exploit your your own attack. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the progression of both of them. We have them penciled in for December 10th as well. They can't focus on December 10th because they have to get rid of this one out of the way. And it's um, yeah, it's another step in the in the ladder for both of them. As well as that, obviously, I've said that you're going to have a big card in December. You've announced last night Tyrone McKenna, Liam Taylor for the WBO European. Um, other than that fight, what else can we can we look at? Obviously, we've got Michael as the main event. Sean McComb on the card, is there a potential opponent for him in the works at the moment? Yeah, uh, McKenna against Liam Taylor probably is a great trade fight. And people who who understand um, Manchester boxing and, and, and up north boxing there, they will know Liam Taylor and the kind of fights that he's brought to the table previously on a smaller scale. He doesn't have, I think, the recognition that Tyrone has and he's fought once maybe twice in front of big cameras and um i i, I watched i was in i think we were, we were the sheffield or something for his fight against darren tetley when he fought darren tetley I, I, it was a great fight be live at it and it was behind closed doors to be live and hear the punches and and what they that the lads put on the lane was you know it stood with me and i always thought liam taylor was a fan friendly fighter him and him and tyrone is a it's a great match. It's a match that can only please the, please the fans and people will leave happy. Tyrone comes forward and knows one way. Liam, after again watching his last fight with Martin Harkin, can get hurt but comes back. They both have great resolve. Their shot selection is very, very good. Their defence is very, very poor. So it's, 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 a, fan's, it's a fan's fight. And I think for, for, a tr for the trade... It is a great fight. It probably flies under the radar. They don't have the big prestige of the of the other welterweights in the division, but they have uh, good old fashioned blue collar fighters that, that come and put it all on the lane. McComb is the the other title fight we're looking to put on the card. We've been speaking with a few different Irish fighters. For the for the card as a whole, we're trying to do as much all Irish, trying to uh, keep uh, Irish boxing moving, thriving. To do that, uh, you need to keep the community in terms of both sides of the card fighting and the Irish boxing fans community happy the way you do that there is not having one side of the card and you look at the card you know okay they're all going to win yes it's good to support that but it's even better to support it when the both fighters are putting on the lane and, and risking it all for the fans so the fans get what they want the fighters get what they want because the rewards would be greater than beating um a foreign journeyman or a journeyman coming in to lose so that's that's our element of it we're trying to do McComb in a good title fight an Irish title fight an all Irish title fight for a for an international belt we've been speaking to Lee Baxter and, uh, about Lee Reeves and Sean McComb and I've put it out to one or two other Irish fighters for Sean McComb and we've we've also went far, farther afield to France and so off so I'm looking to do a good fight for McComb and further down the card we've done Fergal McCrory against Graham McCormick which from an Irish boxing perspective, it's a great fight for a Celtic title, BUI Celtic title. I think that's going to be a fire fight for two rounds, three rounds while it lasts. Both of them know one way. Both of them are trains in their own steam train for Fergal and the G train for, for Graham. So I think they're going to meet in the middle and, and show it all out. But it gives kind of Irish boxing like, like an additional boost when you have when you have these kind of fights that the, that the fans can get their teeth into. Who else could we expect to see on the card from an Irish boxing perspective? Is there anyone else in your mind at the moment who could potentially make up the rest of the undercard? Yeah, no, listen, we're speaking to various different fighters um, and their teams uh, about doing fights, about getting on the card. And yeah, they, they we'll announce him in the next week. Hopefully we should have the full card done by Friday and announce them by next week. As well as that, you know, it's on the 10th of December. Is that the kind of Christmas feel that you want to this event? Is, is the night really based on that? Are you going to have that as the main focus as well? Yeah, it is. It's, we're all kind of we're entering a bit of the unknown um, with how the economy and the world is going to look out. But Christmas coming up around the corner is the perfect package that the boxing adding boxing to the, the Christmas calendar and adding it to like something that that fathers can go to, son can go to, nights out, Christmas nights out for the lads, Christmas nights out for for groups of. You know, couples and you know friends and companies. So yes, attaching that Christmas download to it, 
keeping the price of tickets down low, 30 and 40 being the majority of the tickets um, being, being on sale. So it adds to that value that you're getting great value for your money. Uh, and it's not a big hurt in the pocket for your Christmas night out, not a big hurt in the pocket for Christmas, given the fact that, you know, we are in potentially on uncertain times. I do need to get your thoughts on the main event. Why Gurphy? Was anyone else considered? You know, we've seen Gurphy in a fight of the year contender against Jordan Gill. Was Jordan Gill ever considered um, before the Kiko Martinez fight was made? Or, or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, Jordan Gill was considered. Um, he spoke briefly to Frank Smith, but I think they, they had other plans for Jordan. Kiko was also considered, but they all, they all had plans. So it was just unfortunate that we couldn't lock in either of them. If you know, That was just probably priority that we wanted to do. And, Maybe we took a wee bit too much time ourselves getting getting everything in order regarding the date, so it just missed us to, to do a Gill and our Kiko fight like that. But I think Griefy fits the bill. Great name recognition from the summer. Um, both him and Michael coming off cr uh, fight of the year losses, so um, and they've both rebounded with wins. It, it, it's it's a good match. It's a good match. Very very good. I think he comes to win. He has a different style than what Mariaga presents. Where he's going to be a bit more, uh, no output is going to be a bit more. Doesn't punch the same. I don't think as Mariaga, but he's he was always very late or very, very uh, big for fat bantamweight. So moving up the feather was a big was the right move for for Kareem. And I think going off, I think he was winning beating Jordan Gill until he wasn't um, his last fight there. And yeah, I think it's a great match for me. Going to be a tricky enough test. I can't underestimate, it. and I know we have big plans for March and things in the works for March to do something big but Kareem is here to win they've known about it for a while so they've had plenty of preparation to him and, and they're working on Michael and, and they, if Kareem beats Michael you know, the world is his oyster he has big fights on the horizon so he, Michael cannot overlook him and it's, it's a fight that will provide some, some questions that need answered Finally Jamie before I let you go because I know we'll catch up again this weekend Fury Chisora announced today what's your thoughts on that in your opinion, from a from a management and a promoter side of things, do you think that's the right fight for Tyson Fury going forward? Um, it, listen, it's a it's a time saving fight. I'm sure they're still going to try and do a bigger fight in early New Year. I get I get why Chisora works for 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 them, for Fury and and the teams there. But again, he has he's coming off a win, I think Chisora, but uh, it doesn't really appease to me too much. But I get it. I understand the fight. Yeah. Jimmy, thanks a million for your time. We'll do this again soon. Cheers, Colin. Thank you. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light. Yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.